Hello, uh, welcome back once again from another video from my channel, another tutorial about Google Earth Engine Explorer. Uh, today we're gonna learn something uh, very basics and very essentials about the capabilities and uh, features of the uh, Google Earth Engine Explorer. So let's see. Uh, first of all, so what do we need to do to set up our account in Google Earth Engine Explorer? As we know, Google Earth Engine uh, Explorer or, or uh, is a sub platform of um, Google Earth Engine that you need to activate your uh, Google Earth Engine account to use uh, Google Earth Explorer as well. So to set up uh, your uh, Google Earth Engine, uh, you need to activate an account using an, a Gmail email address. And remember that you need to use uh, Google Chrome browser uh, for this purpose. So in this tutorial, uh, we're going to talk and discuss about the available data and data sources in Google Earth Explorer platform so and also we'll talk about the complete list of the data type of calculations and processing available in uh, this platform and also <coughs> the capabilities that exist are the Google uh, Earth Explorer has yeah, as I mentioned, uh, it is a web-based platform. It's a GU, uh, GUI environment. It means uh, in the platform of Google Earth Engine, uh, we need to uh, code or we need to know programming languages such as Java and Python. So in this platform, there is no need to know coding languages or programming languages. You can do it quite like either graphic or graphic user interface programs. So you can work in this environment as well. And you can import and export satellite images. So you can process and applying filters, masks, and so uh, calculating the indices, spectral indices of the satellite images, and finally you can export your results. So one of the most important advantages of the EEE is uh, being cloud-based processing. And you, do, you don't need to uh, download as much as many data uh, to be processed and uh, uh, a great system uh, to be capable of the satellite image processing. Uh, you, don't need, you don't need all this at the same time. Just you can do it with a simple computer and uh, you can process all the uh, or you, your, your data in a cloud-based environment. So it is uh, better to uh, do your process or image processing uh, in an environment that works cloud based because you don't need to have uh, uh, 
much more capacity of memory or hard drive in your laptop because you can save everything online uh, in your cloud. So the data available on Google Earth Engine uh, can be considered as follows. You can uh, access original satellite image, then daily data or data from multiple days, corrected images, and uh, the data from many, many satellites like Landsat data, MODI, Sentinel, and any other satellites. <clears throat> so you can import images into the uh, Earth Explorer even from your laptop or from your computer or even from online resources. You can visualize them. You can apply various spectral indices and various type of masks and filters. And also when you are applying a filter after application that filter, you can see the threshold. So it works like a reclassification. So a significant class in this uh, uh, the process the image must be dedicated uh, and which values must be part of this class, which values must uh, be out of the class. You can see it a threshold. Uh, by setting this threshold, you can specify the range of the values inside the class. So, <laughs> You can see uh, some uh, basic features uh, of the Earth Explorer and the Google Earth Engine. Um, both of them are web-based platforms. So actually, we can say EEE is part of GEE. So Earth Explorer is an GUI environment or graphical user interface environment, but GE is a coding environment. So in GE, you can work without coding, but in uh, GE, you work with coding. You must be familiar or proficient with the Java or Python programming. In EE, you can work only with a single image. And at the same time, you are not able to import many images as we have this capability or this opportunity in GE. Uh, we can import as many as images after 5,000 images in the environment of the GE. So let's uh, take a look. At the environment of uh, Earth Explorer. So here we, we write here Google Earth Engine. If you have uh, already activated your Google Earth Engine account, you can open via searching Google. So when you enter in this page uh, from these platforms, you can select which one you want. If you want to work with Google Earth Engine, you can select the coding editor. If you want to work with the Google Earth Engine Explorer, then you can select Explorer. You must be patient. So here, now you have this page. So you know, first of all, you must enter your account. You must be signed in. So 
So you must choose your account, which went, which one is your register account. So I wait a little bit to be signed in to the Google, Google Earth Explorer. Oh, it wasn't necessary to roll out this page. So, it's high, a heavy platform and need a higher speed of network to be loud faster. Okay, in this platform, or in this page, uh, you see some capabilities and some capacity, and some options that will be used in image processing. So from here, you can select satellite, and you have to wait the map to be loaded. This is exactly the map of Google Earth that you have seen here with the same resolution and with the same quality. So you can choose in a specifying zone and your study area. If you want to see the borders, remember to check the labels. And this catalog in this option provides some uh, catalog of data that you can select uh, from here. And you see some tags here, for example, daily, eight day, 32 days, surface temperature, radiance, top of atmospheric correction, or TOA, and USG, CSRT, and something like this. So when you select a tag, for example, daily, you can see here the list of the data that exists under, the, under this tag. So if you want it to work with, the, with this uh, product or with the selected data, you can click on the open in workspace so you can see the data in your workspace here or if you didn't want it or didn't get the your your specified data in that list and you can change your tags here for example surface temperature and uh, exactly uh, what you see in the list here, it would be the line surface temperature. For example, uh, from satellite modis, aqua sensor, DLA, EVI, or enhanced vegetation index. Or from modis, terra sensor, DLA, NDVI, or normalized difference vegetation index or any other data. You can check the list and select the tags according to your needs and you can add to your workspace what you need. And, or you can add the data by clicking here, add data. And you can search 
by the name of the exact data that you need to uh, be imported. The data you need to be imported here when you want to analyze this sort of data. And here we have some computations like uh, adding bands, um, applying masks, so setting thresholds and convolutions and something else. And here you can do some, some classifications too. And this is your workspace. Even when you are uh, processing some images here, or some satellite data here, and you can save it and leave the workspace. And when you are back to the Google Earth Engine Explorer back, then you can restore by clicking in the restore set workspace and you can get back the workspace or when you want it uh, to restart the processing or cancel uh, your procedure of uh, processing then you can start from the beginning or from the initial finds so you can click here clean your workspace it means it will clear clear everything that you did in your workspace. So by importing export image or the data, you can export the data from your uh, workspace or from this platform to your system to your uh, Google Drive. And also you can import the data from your laptop or local drive. So it was uh, initial and basic introduction uh, about the Google Earth Engine Explorer and if you want to learn more about the Google Earth Explorer, please uh, watch the next video.